Okay, good afternoon everyone and we will be discussing today the data pre or data processing. The real world database are highly uh, susceptible to noisy, missing, and inconsistent data due to the highly typical huge size of 10, uh, several gigabytes or more. And there are uh, likely uh, origin from multiple heterogeneous sources. So low quality, okay, uh, low quality data will lead to a low quality extracting result. Now, the question are, how can the data be pre-processed in order to help improve the quality of data and consequently of uh, mining result? And then, how can be uh, pre-processed or how can this data can be pre-processed so as to improve the efficiency and ease of the mining extract uh, process? So, there are a number of data processing techniques that could be used. One of which, as I've said from the previous video that I uh, presented, is the data cleaning, the data integration, data transformation, and the data reduction. Let us discuss them one by one. So when we say data cleaning, it can be an applied to remove noise and inconsistencies in the data. On the other hand, data integration is emerges of data from multiple sources into a coherent data store such as the data warehousing. Uh, in ad aside from that, we have the data transformation such as the normalizations that may be applied. Uh, not only that, we have the normalization that may be improved in the accuracy and efficiency of extract algorithm involving distance measurements. Last one is we have the data reduction and uh, all right, so as I've said, data integration merges data from multiple sources into a coherent data store, such as a data warehouse. On the other hand, data transformation is the uh, normalization that may be applied. When we say normalization, it may improve the accuracy and efficiency of extraction algorithms involving distance measurement. And the last one is the data uh, reduction that can be reduced the data size by aggregating, eliminating redundant features or clustering, for instance. So these techniques are not mutually exclusive. They may work together. Let's say, for instance, in data cleaning, it can involve transformation to correct wrong data, such as by transforming all entries for a date field to a common format. <coughs> data processing techniques when applied before extraction can substantially improve the overall quality of the patterns extracted and or time required for the actual extracting. <coughs> We are also introduced the basic concept of data pre-processing that presents the descriptive data summarization, which uh, serves as a foundation for data processing. Descriptive data summarization helps us study the general characteristics of the data and, of course, identify the presence of noise or outliers, which is useful for unsuccessful data cleaning and data integration. These methods for data pre-processing are organized into the following categories. One, data cleaning, integration, and transformation, and as well as the uh, data reduction. Now, as you can see here in the, uh, no, in the uh, uh, figure that when we want to have the data cleaning, uh, it is the concept of hierarchies that can be used in an alternative form of data reduction where we replace the low-level data such as the raw values for age. Let's uh, take that for an example. Which higher-level concepts such as the youth, middle age, or senior. And then, uh, 
Incomplete, noisy, and inconsistent data are commonplace properties of large real-world databases and data warehouses. Now, incomplete data can occur for a number of reasons. The attributes of interest may not be always available such as the customer information for sales transaction data. So other data may not be included simply because it was not considered important at the time of entry. Now, uh, this... Uh, this uh, method is the data pre-processing in which <clears throat> uh, if we have to, uh, this is our um, uh, noise and data cleaning is we are removing the noise or redundant data. And the data integration, so let's say for instance, we have the uh, uh, database for let's say, um, for uh, sales, this is for products, and this is for, let's say, for instance, I product detail in one database. We can uh, transform this, okay, this uh, data into this form. Now, data pre-processing, as we all, as we said, that uh, we have uh, the data reduction. In here, we have the different transactions from A1 to A26, transaction 1 to transaction N. Now, this transaction could be, could have uh, its attributes, uh, transactions from T1 to T, T1456 to the attribute of A1 to A15. What have you noticed with the, with the, uh, with the uh, module or this uh, uh, this image. So as you can see from attributes A126, it is toned down in 215. And for that uh, transaction to up to 2000, it has now had 1456. It's, that is the uh, moment or use of data uh, reduction. Data cleaning uh, in a real world, data tend to be incomplete, noisy, and inconsistent. So the data cleaning or data cleansing routines attempt to fill in missing values, smooth out noise, while identifying outliers and correct inconsistencies of data. So we have the different uh, missing values. So let us imagine that you need to analyze all electronic sales of end customer data. You need or you note you know that the tuples have no recorded value for several attributes, such as customer income. So how can you go about filing in the missing values for the attribute? Let's look at uh, the following uh, methods. Number one is ignoring the tuple values. Uh, this is uh, usually done when the class label is missing. Let us assume that the data extraction task involves classification. This method is not very effective unless the tuple contains several attributes with missing values. It is especially poor when the percentage of missing values per attribute varies considerably. Next is we have to fill in the missing value manually. This uh, this method in general approach is a uh, time consuming and may not be feasible given a large data set with many missing value. Number three is the use of global content constant to fill in a missing value. We are going to replace all missing values by the same constant such as the label like unknown. If missing values are replaced by say let's say unknown, then the extracting values may mistakenly think that they form a, an interesting concept since they all have a value in common that is unknown. Hence, although this method is simple and is not foolproof. Number four is the use of attributes that mean to fill in the missing value. Let us uh, uh, take for instance that uh, suppose that an average income of all electronic cost, uh, customers is 56,000 pesos then you use this value to replace the missing value of the income. That's the uh, method for missing the, or fill upping the missing value. Number five is the uh, 
using of attribute mean for all samples belonging to the same class as the given tuple. Let's say for instance, if classifying customer according to credit risk, replace the missing value with the average income value for customer in the same credit risk category as that of a given tuple. Next is the most uh, the use of most probable value to fill in the missing value. This may be determined by regression. When we say uh, regression, this is the interference-based tools using a Bayesian formalism or decision tree introduction. For example, using the other customer attributes in your data set, you may construct the decision tree to predict the missing value for the income. So what are the reasons for missing value? It may include, number one, uh, the person originally asked to provide a value for the attribute refuses and uh, find the information requested is not applicable. Say, for instance, the license number attribute were being left blank by the non-drivers. Number two, the data entry person does not know the correct value. Number three, the value is not to be provided by a later step of the process. The null rule should specify how the record the null consideration. Let's say, for instance, uh, zero, uh, store zero for numerical attributes, a blank for character attributes, or any conventions that may be used, such as the entries like don't know or question mark, should be transformed in a blank. So, what is the noise? What is noise data, or what is noise? Oh, it is not. Uh, the one that literally known as ingay, okay? Noise is a random error or variance in a measured variable given a numerical attribute such as, uh, let's say, for instance, price. How can we smooth out the data to remove the noise? So let's look at the following data smoothing techniques. So we have here the uh, sorted data for price. Let's say, for instance, uh, we have 4, 8, 15, 21, 21, 24, 24, 28, and 34. In a partition, it, it is being partitioned into bins such as uh, into four equivalent value, ano? into four equivalent value. So we have four, uh, three equivalent value rather. We have in bin one, we have 4, 8, and 15. So in uh, we separated it into three. And then the next one is 21, 21, and 24. And then the next one is yung bin 3, we have 25, 28, and 34. So, ito yung nakikita natin dito. Let's have, alright, let's use this one. So, as I've said, we separated it into three values in La, and we use as if this is a frequency for different bin. Now, how are we going to smooth them by bin means? So, when we say in bin means, how did we get 9? So, paano natin nakuha si 9? So, ganito lang siya. Uh, we have uh, we are going to add this uh, this uh, data. Say for instance, for for plus eight for it lang. Let's use the other colors, which would be very visible. Let's say for plus 8 plus 15 is equal to 4 plus 8 plus 15 is 27. 27 divide 3 kasi tatlo sila is equal to 9. So, bin means yung ano natin, yung mean ano, nung bin natin is 9 for bin number 1. So, let us use naman for bin number 2. We have 21 plus 21 plus 24 is equal to 
we have 22. So, uh, ito po ay 21 plus 21 plus 24. We have 66 divide 2 is equal to 22. And the last bin would be 25 plus 28 plus 34 is equal to 87. 34. This is 34. It's equal to 87 divided by 3. is equal to 29. So if we are going to smooth them, smooth them, by mean, ano, mean yung hinahanap natin, we are going to, instead, uh, this is also applicable in many other uh, data, not only for three terms or four terms or ano, but so for as long as uh, we are going to determine how many uh, numbers do they have and then divide that, uh, that numbers into uh, the count of the data or the data na meron kayo, nakagaya nito. Kung meron kayong 4 dito, halimbawa, nadagdagan natin siya plus, let's say, for instance, ah, nag meron pa siya, let's say, for instance, na 20. So, yan, i-divide nyo siya into 4. Ano? Ah, kasi, every bin should be separated or ah, into ah, equal size. So, dapat lagi silang equal kasi hindi pa din sila ay hindi mag equal Okay, that's the frequency into equal, a partition into equal frequency. So, let's say for instance, meron kayong ibang ibang data, uh, mga 20 data, i-divide nyo siya ano, into equal sizes. Okay? Tapos, how about uh, what uh, the smoothing bean boundaries naman? Paano naman to nangyari? So, ganito. Uh, dahil bin boundaries ang kinukuha natin. Okay? Uh, pansinin, ito lang yung kanyang scenario. Ano? <clears throat> uh, ito naman, ang nangyayari dito is that we get the first, ito, yung ating first number and yung second part niya, kukopyahin lang natin siya and then retain yung sa last number. So, yun yung nangyayari po dun sa ating bin boundaries. Did you get that? Okay. Now, when we say binning, it is a method a smooth or sorted value by cons uh, consulting its neighborhood. That is the value around it. The sorted values are distributed into a number of buckets or bins. Because binning methods consult the neighborhood of values, they perform local smoothing. So, in this... Uh, in this uh, uh, figure, it illustrates some binning techniques. In this example, the data for price are first sorted and then partitioned into equal frequency bins of size of 3. So, each bin contains 3 values kasi dapat nga ay uh, they are equal. In smoothing by means, each value in a bin is replaced by the mean value of the bin. For example, ito na nga yung sabi ko kanina as I explained for the values of 4, 8, 15, bin 1 is 9 because we uh, divided them by 3 kasi yung tatlo yung kanyang equal size. Therefore, each original value in this bin is replaced by the value of 9. Similarly, smoothing the bin medians by, that can be employed in which each bin value is replaced by the bin median. In smoothing by bean boundaries, the minimum and maximum values in a given bean are identified as the bean boundaries. Always remember that each bean value is then replaced by the closest boundary value. In general, the larger the width, the greater the effect of smoothing. Alternatively, beans may be equal width where the interval uh, range of this value in each bean is Constant. So, binning is also used in the discretion technique. Now, moving on with the regression. Data can be smoothed by fitting the data to a function such as with regression. We have a what we call the linear regression that involves the finding the best line. 
Okay, we are going to find the best line to fit with two attributes or variables. So that one variable can also be predict the other. We also have the multiple linear regression. It is the uh, uh, extension of linear regression uh, where more than two attributes are involved and the data are to fit in multidimensional surface. Now, next, we have the clustering. Outlayers may be detected by uh, clustering where sem similar values are organized into groups or clusters. Intuitively, values that fall outside the, the set of cluster may be considered outliers. So, as you can see in this uh, example, ito, let's uh, use another color. Yan. In this example, ano, it is a 2D plot of customer data with respect to customer location in the city, showing three data cluster. Each cluster centroid marked with a uh, a plus representing the coverage point in the space that uh, for that cluster. Outliers may be detected as the value that fail outside the set of the cluster. In this case, kung makikita ninyo, we have clustered the uh, customer data. So, itong mga to, ito, yung nakikita natin is a cluster data of a customer. This is also a cluster data of a customer and a cluster data of the customer. The one na nakikita ninyo outside ito mga to, yan. <coughs> outside the clustered yan, ito. Uh, is what we call the outliers. The one that can be detected as values that fall outside the said cluster. Now, data cleaning as a process. <coughs> As we all know, data uh, missing values, noise, and inconsistencies contribute to inaccurate data. So far, ano, we have to look at the techniques for handling missing data and smoothing data. <clears throat> the first step is the discrepancy detection. So this is caused by many several factors including poorly designed data entry form that have uh, many optional fields, human error in data entry, deliberate errors, respondents not wanting to divulge information about themselves, and data decay or the outdated addresses. Discrepancy may also arise from the inconsistent data representations and the inconsistent use of codes. Errors in uh, instrumentation devices that record data and system errors are another source of discrepancies. So, errors can also occur when the data are inadequately used for the purpose other than originally intended. They may also be inconsistent due to the data integration where a given attribute can have different names in different <coughs> databases. So, uh, <coughs> how can we proceed with the discrepancy detection? As a starting point, use any knowledge you may already have regarding properties of the data, such knowledge or data about data is referred to as a what we call metadata. So this metadata, <coughs> okay, uh, <coughs> so... For example, what are the domains and data type of each attribute? For uh, What are the acceptable values for each attribute? What is the range of the length of values? Do all, uh, all values fall within the expected range? Are there any known dependencies between attributes? Now, for example, values that are more than two standard deviations away from the mean for a given attribute may be flagged as potential outliers. In this step, you may write your own script and use some of the tools that we discuss uh, further uh, this, uh, this, uh, in this uh, video. From this, you may find uh, noise, outliers, and unusual values that needs a, what we call investigation. So, I think that's the end of our discussion for today. And... Uh, we will be having a discussion of descriptive data summarization.
thank you so much everyone for listening and i hope you uh have learned something from this discussion again.